new year, new you. It's thought for the day on Wednesday, the 6th of January. And uh, today's passage is from the Gospels. It's uh, a, a, a saying of Jesus that recorded in Matthew and in Mark and in Luke. Uh, I'm going to read you the version from Mark because it's Mark 2, 22. 2, 2, 2 should be easy to remember. Mark chapter 2, verse 22. Jesus said, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. Now, what is Jesus going on about there? Well, obviously, uh, something to do with the way that wine was kept in Jesus' time. I mean, we're used to the fact that wine comes in bottles, unless you, you go to a Spanish supermarket or something like that on holiday and you get it in cartons and it costs about one euro for a, a, a half a litre of wine, something like that. Um, but in Jesus's time, they didn't have bottles, they didn't have glass um, uh, to speak of. And uh, so they used uh, skins, they used leather skins and they poured new wine into new wine skins because they discovered that uh, if the wine skins had been kept a long time, then uh, they would dry out, the leather would crack. And uh, if you poured the new wine in there, it would just burst the skins. And as Jesus says, both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. So you pour new wine into new wineskins. OK, fine, but surely Jesus isn't really interested in educating us in the way of uh, wine making or the wine trade. No, he's talking uh, in a metaphor, obviously, and he's talking about new wine being his teaching. And the wineskins it requires are fresh minds. That's, that's the, the, what this means in a nutshell. He's saying, are you going to have a fresh mind? Because I want to pour my teaching into some new wineskins. And he says, old wineskins won't do. And he says this in response to criticism by the religious leaders of his time. As you know, the religious people of Jesus' time had loads and loads of criticism for Jesus. They wanted to have a go at him all the time. They found fault in pretty much everything that he said. And at one point, Jesus says this, look, the problem is basically, he says, you are a load of old wineskins. Uh, like old wineskins, uh, in a physical sense, you, you, you've dried out, you've cracked. There's no flexibility in you to hear something new. You're so sure of what you think you already know that you're just not interested in my teaching. You, you, you can't even listen to it properly. And so really it's a challenge, his words. He says, look, are you going to be an old wineskin? If so, my teaching is just not going to do you any good at all. Uh, but if you want to be a new wineskin, then uh, you're going to appreciate what I say. Now, of course, uh, in Jesus' time, he was talking about people who knew their way around the Old Testament, the Old Covenant that I was talking about yesterday. And therefore, they were absolutely sure that the only way you could be friends with God was by uh, keeping the law and doing all the right stuff. And Jesus said, no, that's uh, it's not going to be the way anymore. There's a new contract, a new covenant. And I suspect that for us, most of us won't have been brought up in Old Testament religion. Uh, that's not the kind of old wineskin that we might be. But nevertheless, we might still be prone to slightly being set in our ways, having thinking that's not flexible. So when Jesus come along, comes along and challenges us, we say, uh, oh, this is all a bit strange and new. I'm not sure that I can accept this. For some people, that means the gospel of grace, as it's called, it's a technical term, meaning the good news that we can be God's friends through a, a present given to, him by, uh, given to us by him. A present not by works. We don't work our way to be his friends. We're given it as a present. For some people, that is a very, very strange thing to accept. And people say, look, I, uh, that's not the Christianity that I was brought up with. Well, that is old wineskin syndrome. Uh, we, we mustn't think about what we were brought up with. We must focus on the words of Jesus. What does he want to tell us? Uh, others of us, of course, are, if you like, the opposite end of the spectrum. We say, you know, uh, 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 what I've been brought up with is the fact that um, Jesus has done it all. And therefore, it doesn't matter what I do. God's going to forgive me anyway. So I, I can live my life any way I like. Don't have to obey God's commands. And although that's got some truth in it, actually, again, it's old wineskin syndrome. We need to listen carefully to the words of Jesus, because although he does tell us that our friendship with God has been bought by his blood and is therefore free of charge to us, it doesn't mean that we can do whatever we like and, and uh, ignore his commands, because we want to obey them, because he's uh, so loving.
So the challenge is there. Are we going to be old wineskins? Whatever we think we know, let's not hold on to it too tightly need to be able to listen to the teaching of Jesus. And I think that's one reason why a lot of Christians like to read the Bible afresh every day. And we come to it trying to lay all our preconceptions aside. What is Jesus actually saying here? What's he going to say to me? It may not be what I thought he'd always said before. I'm going to listen carefully and obey his word. Let me pray for that, for God's help with that particular thing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus' challenge that uh, we're to be new wineskins, ready to receive the new wine of his teaching. Uh, we're sorry for all the ways that uh, we are sometimes a bit set in our ways. We think our ideas are uh, right wherever we've got them from. Help us always to be ready to change our minds in light of what Jesus is in fact teaching us. And we thank you for that glorious message that we are your friends because you have forgiven us freely. But also we thank you for the challenge that we are to follow you and serve you in gratitude to all for all that you've done for us. Amen. Amen. God bless.